A short account of the destruction of the Indies is an account written by the Spanish Dominican friar Bartolome de las Casas in 1542, published in 1552, about the mistreatment of and atrocities committed against the indigenous peoples of the Americas in colonial times and sent to then Prince Philip II of Spain. Bartolome de las Casas explains in the prologue that his 50 years of experience in Spanish colonies in the Indies granted him both moral legitimacy and accountability for writing this account. In 1516, Las Casas was granted the title of Protector of the Indians by Cardinal Cisneros after he submitted a report on their severe demographic decline due to harsh labor and mistreatment by colonial officials. During the time when Las Casas served as the protector of the Indians, several clerics from the Order of St. Jerome attempted to reform certain systems which used the native populace as laborers. However, Las Casas found their attempts insufficient to protect the welfare of the Indians, and returned to Spain to appeal to the Spanish monarch in 1517. From 1517 to 1540, Las Casas traveled back and forth between Spain and Spanish colonies in Latin America numerous times, struggling to find a common ground between Spanish authorities and his own humanitarian aims to improve the conditions of Indian subjects in Spanish dominions. One of many purposes of his travels was to continue to protest Spanish colonial mistreatment of Indians. In 1542, after Las Casas first wrote the chronicle later known as a short account of the destruction of the Indies, during the hearings ordered by Charles I of Spain to resolve issues of forceful conversion and colonial exploitation of Indians, Las Casas presented the account before the members of the Council of the Indies as proof of atrocities committed upon Indians by colonial authorities. Las Casas was one of the first advocates for the indigenous people. The book was published when de las Casas was 67 years old. A short account of the destruction of the Indies is one of many books by de las Casas that shows that he was highly persuasive and respected by the Spanish court. A short account was one of the most influential sources used to attempt to improve colonial conditions for the indigenous people. The book was also one of the first texts that revealed the devastation of old world diseases in the new world presentation by Bishop Don Fray Bartolome de las Casas. To the Most High and Potent Lord Prince of all the Spains Don Felipe, our Lord underscore. Most High and Potent Lord. Because Divine Providence has ordered in this world that for the direction and common utility of the human lineage, the world be constituted by kingdoms and peoples, with their kings like fathers and shepherds, as Homer has called them zero and therefore the most noble and generous members of the republics. For that reason no doubt of the rectitude of the royal spirits of those kings may be held, on with right reason might be held. And if any wrongs, failings, defects, or evils should be suffered in those kingdoms, the only reason for that is that the kings have no notice of them. For these wrongs, if they be presented and reported, it is the duty of the king, with greatest study and vigilant industry, to root them out. Considering, then, most potent lord, the evils and harm, the petitions and ruin, the equals or likes of which, never were men imagined capable of doing. Considering, as I say, those evils which as a man of fifty years and more experience, being in those lands present, I have seen committed upon those so many and such great kingdoms, or better said, that entire vast and new world of the Indies, lands conceded and given in trust by God and his church to the King and Queen of Castile, to rule and govern them, convert them to belief in Christ and the Holy Catholic Church, and give them to prosper temporarily and spiritually, this subject was not able to contain himself from supplicating with your majesty, most importunely, that your majesty not concede such license nor allow those terrible that things that the tyrants did invent, pursue, and have committed against those peaceable, humble, and meek Indian peoples, who offend no person. Into and among these gentle sheep, endowed by their maker and creator with all the qualities aforesaid, did creep the Spaniards, who no sooner had knowledge of these people than they became like fierce wolves and tigers and lions who have gone many days without food or nourishment. 
and no other thing have they done for 40 years until this day, and still today to see fit to do, but dismember, slay, perturb, afflict, torment, and destroy the Indians by all cruelty, new and divers and most singular manners such as never before seen or read or heard of, some few of which shall be recounted below, and they do this to such a degree that on the island of Hispaniola, of the above three millions souls that we once saw, today there be no more than two hundred of those native people remaining. And thus pregnant and nursing women and children and old persons and any others they might take, they would throw them into the holes until the pits were filled, the Indians being pierced through by the stakes, which was a sore thing to see, especially the women with their children. The island of Cuba is almost as long as from Valladolid to Rome, today it is almost devoid of population. The island of San Juan, Puerto Rico, and that of Jamaica, large and well-favored and lovely islands both, both have been laid waste. On the isles of the Lucayos, Bahamas, where there were once above 500,000 souls, today there is not a living creature. All were killed while being brought, and because of being brought, to the island of Hispaniola where the Spaniards saw that their stock of the natives of that latter island had come to an end. Two principal and general and general customs have been employed by those, calling themselves Christians, who have passed this way, in extirpating and striking from the face of the earth those suffering nations. The first being unjust, cruel, bloody, and tyrannical warfare. The other, after having slain all those who might yearn toward or suspire after or think of freedom, or consider escaping from the torments that they are made to suffer, by which I mean all the native-born lords and adult males, for it is the Spaniards' custom in their wars to allow only young boys and females to live, being to oppress them with the hardest, harshest, and most heinous bondage to which men or beasts might ever be found into. The cause for which the Christians have slain and destroyed so many and such infinite numbers of souls, has been simply to get, as their ultimate end, the Indians gold of them, and to stuff themselves with riches in a very few days, and to raise themselves to high estates, without proportion to their birth or breeding, it should be noted, owing to the insatiable greed and ambition that they have had, which has been greater than any in the world has ever seen before. All the Indians of all the Indies never once did any hurt or wrong to Christians, but rather held them to be descended from heaven, from the sky, until many times they or their neighbors received from the Christians many acts of wrongful harm, theft, murder, violence, and vexation. Las Casas proceeds to recount specific acts of cruelty perpetrated on the people of Hispaniola, San Juan, Puerto Rico, Jamaica, Cuba, Nicaragua, New Spain, Mexico, the Yucatan, Guatemala, Venezuela, Peru, Grenada and other small Caribbean islands, and Florida, referring to Spanish claims north of Mexico in North America. Testament. I, Fray Bartolome de las Casas, friar of the Order of Saint Dominic, who by the mercy of God, am here today in this court of Spain, was persuaded by the same notable persons resident in this court, to set down an accounting of the hell that the Indies are going through, so that those infinite masses of souls redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ may not die for all eternity without any help for it, but rather know their Creator and be saved and by the compassion that I have for my native land, which is Castile, I pray that God not destroy it for the great sins committed against its faith and honor. They would erect long gibbets, and bind thirteen of the Indians at one time, in honor and reverence, they said, of our Redeemer and the twelve apostles, and put firewood around it and burn the Indians alive. Another time, because the Indians did not give him a coffer filled with gold, they killed an infinite number of souls, and cut off the hands and noses of countless women and men, and others they threw to the savage dogs, who ate them and tore them to pieces. One of the Indian lords, asked me, whether Christians went to the sky, I replied that they did, but only those who were good. And the Indian lord then said, that he did not desire to go to the sky, 
but rather down to hell, so that he would not be where they were and would not see such cruel people. I have great hopes that the Emperor and King of Spain, our Lord Don Carlos, the fifth of that name, may come to understand, for until now, the truth has always been most industriously covered over, the acts of malice and treachery which have been and still are being done upon those nations and lands, against the will of God and his own, and that he may bring an end to so many evils and bring relief to that new world which God has given him, as the lover and cultivator, as he is of justice. Please note that. The book has been critiqued for centuries for its reliability about the treatment of the indigenous people and the number of indigenous people who died as a result of the mistreatment by the Spanish conquistadors. It was written to persuade the Spanish king to act in response to the Spanish conquistadors' abuse of the indigenous population. As a primarily persuasive text, many critics argue that facts and figures about the mistreatment and death toll were exaggerated making the text largely unreliable. However, for political as well as religious reasons, including the evidence from Las Casas, King Charles issued the new laws of the Indies in 1542 to moderate the treatment of the Indians. The new laws were opposed and ignored by most colonial officials in Spanish America.